Welcome to Epworth United Methodist Church, where we follow the example of Christ by welcoming, nurturing, and serving all people with love. Greetings, friends. It is good to be together in this way when we cannot be together in person, but we will be back together in person soon if you are able to, to join us. Uh, In-person worship will resume on May 2nd at 10.30 a.m., so if you are comfortable joining us, we would love to have you, uh, but we will continue to be recording worship. Uh, it will not be available at 10.30, but you'll be able to watch it later on uh, Sunday and throughout the week. Thank you for your faithful stewardship throughout your regular giving. Um, throughout the year, of course, you can do so electronic banking on our website, or mail it to the church. This week we celebrate Earth Day, and so um, of course that's a reminder to, um, that we are stewards of the environment, stewards of creation, 
and to praise God for all that God has created. And even as I speak, um, the um, Helping Hands Health and Wellness Center is putting in their, um, their community garden where they are growing fruits and vegetables that they will then distribute to their patients. And so we are glad that we can partner with them and uh, that they are um, uh, using uh, the grounds that we have uh, to, um, to be good stewards in that way. <clears throat> Share prayer requests with you. Tom Pritchard um, continues his journey following his uh, stroke. Uh, I, um, uh, the latest is that he is um, responding somewhat um, uh, when you talk with him, and, uh, and so that's a good sign, but it's uh, a one day at a time journey for him, and so we pray for Tom and Jessica um, for uh, in the days ahead. Terry Lowry uh, had triple bypass surgery on Friday and um, she had been having um, back pain and nausea um, and, uh, and so being persistent uh, they were able um, to um, locate uh, some clogged arteries which led to that which is a reminder ladies that um, uh, heart problems in women manifest themselves differently than in men. So it um, means we need to pay attention to our body uh, and um, be persistent when the doctors can't find anything the first time around, um, that if those persist, to pay attention to that. Um, but we praise God that surgery went well and she is recovering well at Riverside Hospital. On a sad note, um, Tom Brown, a former member of our church, passed away this past week, and so we hold um, Donna Brown, his wife, and their family in prayer um, during this difficult time. Also, Liddy Lindsay's brother, Charles, passed away on um, Friday evening, and so we hold her in prayer. She also lost a very dear friend, uh, and so this is a, a, a very difficult time for her as well. Uh, we also want to pray for um, those uh, who were impacted by the mass shooting uh, at um, the FedEx building in Indianapolis for um, the families of those who lost their lives and all who worked there and the trauma um, that they are experiencing now. Um, this is the 45th mass shooting in the United States uh, since the beginning of 2021. So we pray for peace in our country. On some positive uh, notes, um, Ellie Moore is turning 93 this week on um, uh, April 23rd. And so um, I encourage you to send her a card, wish her a happy birthday on her 93rd birthday. She's one of our oldest members. She's in the directory listed as Eloise uh, Moore. So um, Eloise Moore or Ellie Moore is having a birthday. This is also, uh, Cora Green also shares her birthday, by the way, and I plan to see Cora this week. I'm fi finally um, uh, had my um, vaccine and, and will have had my to two weeks, so I'm able to go see her, so I'll have more information about her condition um, next week. And um, which, of course, is a reminder that we continue to pray for those who have um, COVID-19, um, Franklin County has just gone back into purple, um, mostly in um, the younger um, people's age range. Uh, and so um, we pray that more and more people will get vaccinated and, uh, and of course pray for those who are health um, professionals and for those who are caring for 
um, for those um, who have been impacted and for families who have lost loved ones uh, in this past year and a half. If you do have prayer requests during the week, um, please communicate those to Susan in the church office so that we can share those on the prayer chain so that your church family can be praying for you and with you. Um, and also, um, we, uh, I want to, as your pastor, um, be um, caring for you as best I can in these odd times, so be sure to stay in touch. Um, contact me, contact the church office, and um, we love you, I love you, I care about you, and I want to be in ministry with you uh, during uh, this time and always. So let us be in a spirit of prayer. Creator God, who gave us life and set all of life in motion. You breathed and all of creation began. You breathe into us the breath of life. You breathe your Holy Spirit and grant us peace and power to be your witnesses in the world, witnesses of peace, of comfort, of justice, maker of all that is good and holy, create in us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. We confess that there is much within us that is not holy, that is not clean. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to have less of us and more of you in how we think and act. To put away all pride and prejudice, to put away all in inclinations toward violence and hate, hard-heartedness and anger, and focus on your ways and your words. Renew us, O oh God, that we might be more like Jesus. When we are faced with the challenges of life, when we are hurting, when we are grieving, when we have concerns on our hearts as we do today, when we feel burdened by what is going on in the world around us, in our society, when we are burdened by the racism in our culture. Help us to trust you enough to lay it all down before you and let your power and grace take it from there. We pray for your wholeness to dwell in us, in our community, that there would be mutual love and respect and concern for one another in all of our wonderful diversity. As we anticipate Earth Day, remind us that every day is Earth Day. Remind us that you have entrusted us to be stewards of the Earth. Remember that we are not only consumers of the environment, but also caretakers. We are surrounded by your glory, O oh God. May we care for it tenderly, responsibly, with future generations forever in our minds. We thank you and praise you for all that you are doing and have done and will do in our lives. 
We never want to take you and all that you are doing for granted, most loving and generous God. We pray all of this and all the prayers of our hearts in the powerful name of the risen Christ who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us. God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, God God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us. Where there was death, you brought life, Lord. Where there was fear, you brought courage. When I was afraid, you were with me. And you lifted me up. You lifted me up. Where there was death, you brought life, Lord. Where there was fear, you brought courage. When I was afraid, you were with me. And you lifted me up. You lifted me up. You lifted me you lifted me up God with us God for us nothing can come against no one can stand between us God with us God for come against no one can stand between us this morning's scripture is taken from the book of Luke chapter 24 
verses 36b through 48. Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies and you see that I do. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still they stood there in disbelief, their eyes filled with wonder and astonishment. Then he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he ate it as they watched. Then he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations, beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. And you, you are witnesses to all these things. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, Fall afresh on us. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our spirits, that through my words or in spite of them, we might hear your word to us today. Amen. Some of you may have read the book or seen the movie, Same Kind of Difference as Me. It's about a relationship between Ron, an international art dealer, and Denver, an African-American man who is illiterate and homeless, and ultimately the ministry that evolved because of Ron's wife, Deborah, a woman of deep and profound faith who insisted that her husband get beyond himself, serve others, extend himself toward this challenging man, and in the process grew in faith and learned of the power of God to overcome differences, fear, brokenness, and even death itself. The sequel of that book came about as a result of many people being inspired after reading the first one. It expands on their original story and gives testimonies from how people's lives were influenced by the book. One day, Ron was talking to their publisher on the phone, batting around ideas about a title for the second book. By that time, they had become such family that Denver had moved into their home. During the conversation, Denver walked through the kitchen and Ron said, what do you think the title of the book should be? Denver looked at him for a long time and said, what difference do it make? Ron said, that's it! 
to which Denver just shook his head and kept walking. That's what the book is about. Stories from their life, the life of Ron's wife, Deborah, who had since died of cancer, and of many other testimonies witnessing to the truth that one person really can make a difference. As Ron says in the introduction, it witnesses to the truth that if you spend time on your knees and then are willing to get your hands dirty, God will use you to make a difference. Ron and Denver experienced the love of Christ through Deborah and their life together. And that love healed them, changed them, gave them hope, and helped them understand what it is to be followers of Christ and bear witness to that love in their own lives. And because they did share their story about their experience, their relationship, and how Christ was at work in them through the witness and love of Deborah, they inspired others to not only recognize and believe in the power of that love, but also to act. Christ used them to make a difference far beyond what they could have ever imagined. So ultimately, the title of the book isn't important. What matters is the testimonies of people who were impacted by their story and went out to make a difference in someone's life. It was the work and witness that were important. That's what the risen Christ said to the disciples that first Easter evening as he stood among them. But like Ron and Denver and most of us, they didn't immediately get it. They didn't immediately recognize him for who he was. The disciples were still trying to sort it all out, trying to make sense of the empty tomb and the angel and the appearance of Jesus on the road to Emmaus and everything that he had told Cleopas and his wife on the way to Emmaus and the making himself known in the breaking of the bread. And while they were locked in the room discussing all of this, Jesus came and stood among them. And the disciples had a natural reaction. They were startled and frightened. Was it a ghost? Was it an apparition? What was it? Who was he? Then Jesus said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. But the disciples were still not sure. So he asked for some fish. Only someone who is flesh and bone can eat, right? He is not a ghost, but Jesus, physically crucified, physically with them again. This overwhelms them. It's almost too good to be true. So while in their joy they are still disbelieving and wondering, all of these emotions and thoughts swirling around in their hearts and minds all at once. As writer David Loos says, the disciples remind us that joy and Disbelief, wonder and knowledge, courage and fear, confidence and uncertainty, these are actually neither polar opposites nor necessary conditions, 
but rather part and parcel of our experience. Robust Christian faith isn't about only embracing one side of the equation, joy, courage, confidence, belief. Rather, robust faith takes root in the tension of joy and disbelief. So, ready or not, with strong faith or still full of wonder, with understanding of what Jesus has done and said, or still trying to process it, needing a little more time on their knees or anxious to get their sandals on, Jesus tells them, you are my witnesses. Jesus tells the disciples they are to be witnesses of all these things, not only what was happening in that room at that time, but of their entire journey and relationship with him, about all that he had taught them, and then to proclaim the good news that he who died is risen and that through repentance and forgiveness of sins, all would have life in his name. They were to testify to how the risen Christ changed their lives and continues to make a difference. And so we too are to be witnesses of all these things, of our experience of Jesus and all the aspects of our faith, including our struggles and disbelief, our pain and our disappointments, as well as our hopes and our joy and our excitement and our love. of our forgiveness and our belief in Jesus, our Savior, who died and is risen and keeps showing up in our lives to bring us, in the words of the hymn, awe and wonder, love and praise in the midst of all of it. A couple weeks ago, I was coming out of Walmart and wearing my sweatshirt that simply says, blessed. The gentleman working at Walmart, you know how they often have a greeter coming in and while well, they now have a greeter going out, the exit greeter said, hey, I like your sweatshirt. I said, thanks, I am blessed. He said, I'm blessed too. And so we had this kind of exchange and saying praise God to each other and I just, and it happened while I kept walking because there were people behind me. So he yelled after me as I was walking, blessed by the best. And I hollered back, amen. And he hollered one more time as I crossed the threshold out of the building before, so that I couldn't even say anything, blessed by the best, pray for the rest. And all I could do was give him a thumbs up and a wave. Did that simple witness make a difference to the people who heard us and kind of pushing me along, talking to each other? Who knows? Did it make people think about how much God had blessed them? Let's hope. It wasn't my goal when I set out for Walmart but I certainly wasn't going to miss the opportunity to give glory to God. And I felt even more blessed because of my exchange with that gentleman. You see, it doesn't have to be complicated. We just have to be paying attention. We just have to be faithful. We need to be 
paying attention because Jesus says to each of us, you are witnesses. We all have stories to tell. We have testimonies of how we have experienced Christ with joy and with disbelief and with wonder all at once. Or how the power of his love has given us hope in the midst of really dark times in our lives. And we have had some really dark times in our country recently. We can all bear witness to how the love of Christ has made a difference in our lives. We can offer forgiveness through the power of his love. We can work for justice in our own way. We can all find ways to get our hands dirty for Jesus. We can all be a blessing in some way because we are all blessed by the best. And when we do these things as Jesus' witness, it really does make a difference. Amen.
Remember that you are loved, that you are blessed, and that we are sent out to, be, to love and to bless one another. That we are called to get our hands dirty for Jesus and to make a difference as his witnesses in the world. Amen.